Hi, my name is Pastor Hal York, and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 and 21. My son, observe the commandment of your father, and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart to tie them and tie them around your neck. So we have a very common theme here in this in the book of Proverbs, especially early on, where the father says, My son. Here's a father talking to his son. That's what the book of Proverbs is, a father instructing his child in the way of wisdom. He's reminding his son of something he mentions again and again. That it's not just enough to hear, that you have to have a certain attitude regarding the parental instruction that you receive as you're growing up. He's telling the child what his responsibility is, what he is to do with his parents' instruction. He's telling his child the benefits of listening and keeping and valuing the instruction of a godly parent. He's rep- this is repeated over and over again. It starts all the way back in chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, where we see this challenge to his son for the first time. My son, hear the instruction of your father. And do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. Observe. Do not forget the teaching. Bind them continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. Here we see the father exhorting his child, but he's not just concerned with the externals of obedience. He's concerned with the heart of the child. Out of the heart come the issues of life. The heart is the seat of our affections, our will, our choices, our desires. The heart is the control center of our life. And the words of the dad and mom need to carry weight in the child's heart and therefore his life. This dad is not just hoping his child does not make him as a father look bad. This is not the dad and mom telling their child to obey so people will admire their parenting skills and think highly of the family. The father is not saying this from a selfish point of view but out of love for the child. His teachings are good. He says in chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. The wisdom the parents are passing on to their child will serve that child well if they will observe it and keep it and value it in the heart. Because that's where true salvation takes place. It needs to begin on the inside. Obedience to be true obedience needs to begin on the inside. But he also says you need to tie them around your neck Such wisdom will be observable to others. That's what happens when you tie something around your neck. People can see it. He says in verse 8 of chapter 1, For they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. A graceful ornament and chains about your neck are things you wear, things that others can see that make your life attractive to other people. Wisdom is not just for the heart. It must manifest itself in the heart to begin. But it must manifest itself in the life. And that's what it's designed for. Wisdom is knowing how to live wisely. It takes root in the heart. It's the control center of our lives, and the heart of wisdom will will be reflected in a life that's lived wisely day by day. With the breakdown of marriage in the home, so many kids growing up in broken homes, divided homes, with one parent or both parents working just to make ends meet. Parents are stressed out, having little time for church, little time for instruction, and and little to, to say if they did have the time for instruction. And the results are obvious as we look around in our society and our culture. Kids are having to learn about life from their friends, from TV, from social media, or just on the street. And what they're hearing from those places seldom is going to reflect biblical values or even the values that their parents wish they had, but they don't have time to teach them. Sadly, in many homes, the mom and dad have punched out emotionally. They entertain the kids if they have time. They drive them to hockey or baseball. But there's little spiritual instruction about living wisely and what that looks like. It's every man for himself. In many homes, the kids are telling the parents what to do, and the parents are obeying the kids. The kids are sitting in the seat of authority in many, many homes. They may say they want that position and like it, but they don't. It's a fearful place for a child to be. Children need parents to teach, to be a parent, not just a chauffeur or a cook or an ATM. Parents have a responsibility to teach children the Word of God. Children have a responsibility to listen and take it to heart and obey. And when that simple formula is not to follow, chaos, despair, rebellion, and anger, and frustration, and many other symptoms begin to spring up in the parent as well as in the child. Children need parents who love them enough to teach them the Word of God, to discipline them, to train them up, 
in the way they should go. If we're going to see our society get back to some level of moral and spiritual sanity is going to begin in the home. So mom and dad, son or daughter, take these verse, simple verses seriously. Observe the commandment of your father and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. And may I add this, if you do that, your life will be blessed. You'll come and understand the God who loves you and died on the cross for you through his son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world to save us from our sins. And the more we begin to learn of him and what he's done for us and what he wants to do in us is if we will follow him and trust him. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You won't hear that on the street. You won't hear it from your friends. You'll, you probably won't hear it on TV. But you may be hearing it from your mom and dad. And you may be hearing it from your preacher, from your pastor. But if you observe it and follow it, your life will take on meaning that you never believed it could. Then you'll have joy that this world is not understanding a peace. But most importantly, you'll have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You'll be reconciled to God. And he'll begin to, to work in you and use you and guide you in your life for a purpose to glorify him and to be used by him for the good of others and the glory of God. So take these words to heart. Take responsibility your role as a parent. Take responsibility your role as a child. And God will bless you in ways you probably never thought possible. But observe the commandment of your father and mother. Do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart, not just on Sundays, but continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. And people will see there's something different about you as you follow the Lord and walk in the blessing of obedience. May this truth guide us and guard us in the trenches of life which we seek to live our lives for the glory of God and the good of others. May God bless.